Our next artist knits yarn and uses different fibers in her work, but for her biennial project on display here at the Hub, she was inspired by ocean research graphs to weave aluminum wire into these three-dimensional pieces. I'm an artist living here on Oahu, but I didn't grow up here. I've only lived here for 11 years. I grew up in Wisconsin. As a child, I was always interested in drawing things and looking at natural history. I studied conservation biology and taxonomy in college. I was, I was very much a bug geek. <laughs> you know, entomology was my specific major. And while I was in one of those classes, one of my professors saw the drawings that I was doing in my notebook. So he offered me a job to work in his research laboratory. He asked if I wanted to be his scientific illustrator. Maybe. 20 years ago, I think it was, I was in a relationship with a person who's now my husband, and he's, he had just gone to Hawaii. He visited Oahu and Molokai. He had relatives living in those places. When he came back from that trip, he said, as soon as I can, I want to move to Hawaii. I'm really glad that he brought us here. I thought I would be a science illustrator for my entire career. I thought I would work as a freelancer or a staff illustrator at museums, especially natural history museums or at universities, but those jobs are really difficult to get. They're, they're not often funded nowadays, so a lot of people do have to scramble and be a freelancer. But in my case, I decided to work for myself, and I decided to do more fine art that was, that was grounded in natural history. So I was painting, I was, I was doing some illustrations that were just of my own interest to learn about the natural history here. And, and then when I became a parent in 2008, I decided to work in a medium that was a little more family friendly. And in this case, it was fiber, so I worked I had previously worked in two-dimensional scales, and in this case with fiber, I realized that I could sculpt, I could make three-dimensional versions of the things that were of interest to me. At the end of December 2015, there was an art professor here at UH that knew that I worked on marine and art issues, and, and she told me about a residency program that sounded really interesting. It's with the Schmidt Ocean Institute, and they, they support scientists on a research vessel that primarily goes around the Pacific, but they have a new program where they embed an artist called an artist at sea within the science crew. And the job of that artist is to interpret what research is happening during each of the voyages. So I applied as quickly as I could, and then in only a few days I was accepted and was told, okay, in, in nine days get ready to go from Honolulu to Tahiti during a span of a month. I applied as a fiber artist rather than as a science illustrator, thinking that that would be a unique perspective, and indeed they went for it. So I brought all my yarn with me and was ready to go. The voyage I was on was studying the health of the ocean through, through techniques that people often use to detect cancer in the human body. So it was very interesting to me that, that it was going to be something that was working on you know, a molecular level or you know, a sub-observational level. The scientists were, were sending down pieces of equipment that would go to a certain depth and then collect water samples. Each of these squares behind me are graphs that show the information that was on screen as the equipment was coming up. The green line represents the, the quality of light or the type of light that's re-emitted from phytoplankton. The yellow line represents the oxygen levels and the orange line represents the temperatures. The scientists in the crew were looking for deoxygenated zones or low oxygen zones within the range of the Pacific that we traversed. And, and this is an area that the scientists have visited in the past. So they were doing repeat samples to see what has changed over time. Prior to my residency on this ship, I had met Nahiraka Mason. I, was, I had some work in an exhibit that she was curating. So when I returned, she did a studio visit and I was showing her these pieces. And, and I decided that I would make sculptures that, that showed the information in a three-dimensional manner. So the information that's on those squares is a two-dimensional graph. You have the x-axis that goes horizontally and the y-axis that goes vertically. And then the numbers that are on that graph Essentially, I wrapped them around, I wrapped around those levels around the y-axis. But in terms of how to make this object, I knew I couldn't work with regular yarn. I considered copper wire, but I wanted something that was of a large enough gauge to, to have a presence. And I also wanted to work with a different color palette that was more evocative of the ocean. So I turned to aluminum, and, and so this is aluminum wire. I've used a little bit of galvanized steel as well to give it more of the structural contact points. I bought rolls of wire that are essentially straight, and then I created a structure, essentially a jig, where I, I wound the wire around those shapes to be able to create this sine wave. So the bracelet I have is also a little scrap of, of my process. Because I have a background with textiles, I know my knitting anatomy, I use the same ideas that I've used with standard knitting, 
and I've applied them here to be able to interlock the layers. There are all kinds of traditional knitting techniques present in this work, but you may not expect it because of the non-traditional material. 